Hi everyone, welcome. If you're new here, my name is Aileen and here we like to talk about all things makeup, mostly luxury makeup, skincare, and fashion. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, I hope you consider subscribing and joining the family. So today, it's the last of the five. It's coming to an end for now, because I'm sure Dior will come out with more. So today we're going to be talking about the Dior Velvet 869 Red Tartan. This, all the other four videos, I have not swatched or touched the palette prior to the video. I swatched them for the first time on video. I swatched this so I could have the swatches with my daughter before she goes to school in the morning. Oh my God, it's so good. <laughs> so, so if you're interested in seeing these swatches and these eye looks, then keep on watching. So let's get to swatching. So I'm gonna swatch one, two, three in the middle, four, five. This really surprised me. This is the palette I left for last because I was like, mm, I don't know. Look at that. Look at that. It, oh, that was like one swipe. This is beautiful. I will say though, I would see this more as a fall palette. Like I really think you could wear anything anytime I would. But if you're about like wearing certain colors at certain times, this is more of a late summer fall palette. Oh, but these shades. And my daughter and I both agreed. This middle shade right here is a lot like the shade that was in Rose Mutabilis that had like the little red micro glitters. So it's a lot like that. I'm going to swatch it again so you can see it but it doesn't have the red micro glitters. So that's that's one that I'm like, hmm, that's pretty similar. But these shades are absolutely beautiful. I, I haven't found one of the five that I'm like not goo goo gaga over. I'm absolutely loving these palettes. Let me know if you're interested in me ranking them. It's It'll be hard because definitely, and I am wiping my fingers off on a microfiber cloth that has some makeup remover on it. But that is the color story. Like, and these swatched beautifully. So these are satins, this is a matte, and these are velvet. So again, this is the Velvet Red Tartan palette. So let's create a few eye looks. If this is the first of the five videos that you are watching, I will have all five videos to all five Velvet palettes linked down below. I will also have somewhere on the screen the picture of the palette showing which shade I am using. So these are the velvet palettes. They are limited edition to Dior. As of now, I believe they are now available in Canada as well as the US. I'm not sure if they're planning on taking them to Europe and expanding this further or if this was a or if this is a line that they're planning on just testing out seeing how it does and if it does well then make a decision to expand i'm not quite sure but i am absolutely loving all of them when i swatched this i was so excited to give it a try this is just that dark brown shade and I did blend it out to soften it out with a brush with no product on it. But I was just stunned, stunned at how this swatched. The pigmentation, all of it. 
And if you've been watching, you know I like to use the same brush. For multiple shades, I just like to flip it. But I am so excited for this one. I'm gonna go ahead and speed through the eye look like I have in the other videos, creating both eye looks, and I will give you my thoughts at the end. Enjoy cue music. That was so fast, so easy, and I used four shades. But one of the shades I kind of topped over at middle matte red. So I'll make sure to use it on the other side. Oh, that's so pretty. And I usually don't gravitate towards like reddish tone colors, but this is so pretty. And they blend effortlessly like I barely touched the tip of the brush to my skin just because I don't want the color to completely wash off but let me tell you they last on the eyes all day they don't crease if you see there I'm 38 years old I have texture on my lids I have experienced eyelids it doesn't emphasize texture wrinkles they're pretty absolutely stunning so let's move on to the next eye look Okay, this bronzy shade I just put all over. I feel like it's a lot like this shade, just with a little bit, cause it's like a satin shimmer, but the way that applied all over the eye, whoa, that's pretty. Okay, so I feel like those two shades are a lot alike, one's just more matte and wants a little more like satin and shimmer well this is a velvet and the other one's more of a satin with a sheen to it but it's so pretty but i want to try to give it okay i'm gonna go into this brow highlight that's really pretty 
I believe I mentioned this in another video, but the fact that I believe it was all of them or all but one have a great inner highlight shade is exciting. Because if you tend to gravitate towards quints or quads, you it's always nice to have that shade already in there. Definitely if you don't, you can apply whichever highlighter you are using. But for me, I like when it has the inner highlight shade already in the palette. This is really, really pretty. And I really didn't emphasize this inner highlight on this side, so I'm going to do that now, but wow. I did, I just wasn't expecting this. I wasn't expecting this at all. I wonder if I can give this some depth by really adding that dark brown velvet shade as liner. I'm going to give that a try. So I'm gonna use my Tom Ford 16. It's like a small angled brush. And I'm gonna bring my mirror closer because I do not have my contacts on. Okay, I really like that. It's going on nicely. It is one of the velvet shades. So it doesn't go on like as crisp as you would like maybe if you're trying to mimic a liner like a gel liner you won't get that from this i don't even think you'll get that from this if you were to wet it but if you like that smudge liner look you will love the velvet as a liner, if you can see there. Very pretty. It did give it that dimension. Oh, I like this. I'm going to see if I can wing it out just a tiny bit. Just a smidge. That is really, really pretty. I really like those shades. And with the lightest shade right in the middle, just to bring some light to the center. Oh, that is so pretty. Okay. I was, I'm just like a little speechless. I wasn't expecting this palette to really stun me the way it did, which is, which is why I left it for last as well as as well as the votes. I don't think anybody expected this, but this is beautiful. Here are the eye looks without liner or mascara. That took me absolutely no time at all. These are absolutely stunning. The performance is stunning. I really wasn't expecting this. I'm just going to, with that same dark brown shade, add a little bit of dark brown right here on the outer third of the lower lash line. I'm going to do the same on this side. I'm going to bring, so I'm not going to bring that too far in. And I don't tend to do that usually. I like to leave the darkness on the outside just so that the rest of the eye looks open and this does more of the almond eye effect but i am going to bring this inner highlight shade down into the inner third of the lower lash and then very lightly with this shade and it should be up on the screen i I'm going to brush across the bottom of both lashes. And I am tapping that off on my arm. So I get the soft ethereal shadow I am looking for. I 
absolutely stunning. I feel like either of these looks could be day or night. I really like that velvet shadow as a liner. Absolutely stunning. Let me apply some liner and mascara and I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back. Here are the eye looks with liner and mascara. Absolutely stunning. For mascara, I did apply the Bite Upswing Mascara. It just gives you that voom volume. On this side, I tight lined with a brown liner, the Makeup by Mario. And if you can see, I only brought it one third of the way in just to keep the rest of the eye open. And on this side, I did the same, but with a Sigma Black. And this is in the shade Wicked. So on this side, I did do use the dark brown shadow as a liner. So I tight lined with the brown pencil just to make it look fuller, but make it all look cohesive. So the only black you see is the mascara. And then that liner, between that liner and the lashes, I filled all that gap in with the tight line, with the brown, and it just gives a more crisp look for that shadow liner. In this side, I went with black since I didn't do any liner and I really wanted to intensify the lashes, make it look fuller and bring a little bit more dimension. This palette just surprised me. I will say the only thing I can say is when I applied these two shades together, the velvet and the shade I applied all over the lid, which was this one, you can tell they were two different finishes but they didn't have much of a distinguishing shade difference, if that makes sense. But you can definitely see that one was like a velvety matte and the other one was a satin shimmer. So that you could see, but these two shades were very similar. But once I pop this shade in the middle, I feel that kind of differentiated the shades, but yet opened up the eye. This is beautiful. I would wear this all day, every day. I would wear this to work. I would wear this anywhere. And these palettes, I've said this in all the videos, they blend so effortlessly. Like the amount of time it takes is it's astonishing. Like it's just so fast because they blend so easily. The only negative I can say from these palettes is honestly, if you're one that really likes to blend a lot, it'll get some getting used to because I usually blend a lot. I just go in circles, windshield wiper, little circles, windshield wiper. You do not have to do that with these. If you do that too much, you can blend away the shadow, but I don't want that to be interpreted in a bad way because if you think, oh my God, if you can blend it away that easy, it must not last on the eye. No, they last all day long. They don't crease. I do have hooded eyes if you see there. I have not primed my eyes with any of the five palettes that I have used. I usually, if I'm going to get creasing, it's going to be right here towards the front where, where that fold just comes down. That's typically where it'll happen. Out here, not so much because I have a habit of just like always raising up my eyebrows. I don't know. It's like I'm waiting for somebody to make the wrong move. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's that's a mom move. The eyebrow moves. Um, but so I really don't get that much here. But I really have not experienced that with these palettes. They're all absolutely stunning. I will say this shade right here is a lot like that dark velvet shade from the Rose Mutabilis. Let me grab it. So this is Red Tartan and this is Rosa Mutabilis. This shade here and the middle shade here, I want to swatch them, but in person, they just, they really do look a lot alike. However, the finishes are different. 
So the one from Red Tartan is like a satin mat. And the one from Rosa Mutabilis is a velvet. But really, really? I would think like the velvet one looks a tinge darker. But like I said, these blend, the way they blend, I really don't think you're going to be able to tell a difference between the two. And where, and where this one does have like the little gold micro glitters, once you get to blending, once I use that shade in the Rosa Mutabilis, I literally had like a, two or three little gold micro glitters, but most of them blended away. So if I blend this, you just, you're not going to be able to tell the difference. So I, I will say that's one negative from having both of these palettes. Because if you have both, then on one of the palettes, you really only have a quad. If you have both. And like I said, the micro glitters is the absolute only difference that I can see once they're blended. And you're not going to have much of those micro glitters once they are fully blended out. I'm also going to have to update the description box on whether the stain because if you see my fingers just from swatching and I have been wiping them off with the Bioderma on a microfiber cloth, they are stained. I feel like the bottoms of my nails from the inside of my nails are stained and my fingertips as well. So I'll have to let you know if they stain the eye or if it comes off completely with makeup remover. I will say none of the other ones have, not even this shade from Rosa Mutalis. This did not stain at all. I love the formula. These are smooth, creamy. I, again, we batted five for five. I was nervous that one or two may not meet the standards of the others. These really are a great formula. I love the matte packaging versus the shiny packaging. But since all five are the same, I am storing them in the box so that they, I have them with stored standing up with the name on top. If I didn't mention, these are seven grams of product. They do have your standard Dior Quint shelf life of six months. But I'm absolutely loving this. I really don't think you can go wrong. But definitely, I'll post a picture here it's on my skin tone that's medium as well as my daughter's who's tan. You can see this is a very versatile palette. I did mention in Rosa Mutabilis that I thought it would be more versatile with multiple skin tones. I have to retract that statement because again, this is the first palette that I swatch prior to using. So that Rosa Mutabilis, all the shades are not versatile on multiple skin tones and you can see those swatches on my Instagram at a merch beauty. I feel like only two to three shades are really versatile and the others were pretty and the other two were kind of ashy and not really wearable if you have a deeper skin tone. That's my opinion but definitely take a look at the swatches on a merch beauty. Let me know what you think. I have swatched all the palettes. I'm in love with these. I'm in love with all of them. I do wish they would have differentiated those red shades, but it's okay. I'm happy to have them either way. But let me know, now that you've seen all five, is there one specifically that is catching your eye or, or two? Which one's speaking to you? If you have questions, leave them down in the comments. I'll be glad to help. If you have any comparison suggestions, let me know and I will gladly post those on Instagram as well. I was trying to get through filming and then I'm gonna go through comparisons. But if you have any that pop out in mind, definitely leave those down in the comments and I'll do those for you. Thank you all so much for coming and until next time, don't forget, we're all perfectly imperfect. Bye.